Okay, I... I have a crazy story prepared for you today, and uh, what I'm about to read is a lot to take in, so listen very closely. This is the story of Mitsuyasu Maino. He was a Japanese porno actor and ultra-nationalist who kamikazed his plane into the mansion of a Yakuza Don named Yoshio Kadama. Maino was upset at Kadama for accepting bribes from Lockheed Martin, which is an aerospace and defense company. Maino felt that Kadama's acceptance of bribe money betrayed the virtues of the ancient samurai code, Bushido. Okay, let's all make sure we're on the same page here because uh, that's a lot to process. Basically, this dude put a plane through this guy's house. This guy's a porn star. This guy's a Yakuza. Got it? Good. Moving on. Yes, this all really happened. And it was also partially caught on tape. Here's some footage that I found online. Circle Kodama's house. Then the engine cut off and the plane crashed. Setting Kodama's second floor balcony ablaze. The airplane was a Piper Cherokee. Mitsuyasu Maino rented it from a local flying club, and he took off for an hour's flight over Tokyo. Then he made his fatal and unsuccessful dive. This is Irv Chapman, ABC News, Tokyo. So here's what led up to the attack. The date was March 23rd, 1976. Maino arrives at Chofu Airport and rents a Piper Cherokee plane. Before entering the plane, he poses for a photograph, and this photograph would be his last. In the photo, you can see he's dressed as a kamikaze pilot. Over his uniform is a leather flight jacket, and around his arm, Japan's rising sun. A few hours after posing for the picture, Mitsuyasu Maino sent his plane plunging into Kadama's home before Maino's kamikaze-style aerial assault set the mansion ablaze, he spoke into the radio, Long live the Emperor, Banzai. Now that was a simplified version of a rather complex tale. The more you learn about it, the weirder it gets. So stick around, because we're going to dive right in. But first, this. Tokyo drink. So there are three men that I have to talk about in order for this story to make complete sense. These three men are Mitsuyasu Maino, the kamikaze porn star, Yoshio Kadama, the Yakuza who Maino targeted, and finally, Yukio Mishima, a novelist whom Maino's father claimed was an inspiration for his son's assassination attempt. Let's start with this story's main player, Mitsuyasu Maino. Mitsuyasu Maino acted in 20 softcore porn films that were all produced and distributed by the same studio, a studio known as Nikatsu. Here's a clip from Stray Cat Rock, Wild Jumbo, a film that Maino was in. Maybe you can try and see if you can spot him. Maino was 29 years old when he died. Here's some basic facts that we know about his rather short life. First, according to his friends, Maino was an avid collector of swords, and he believed that he was a samurai. Second, Maino was an ultranationalist, and third, Maino is said to have once admired ultranationalist icon Yoshio Kadama. In Maino's opinion, by Kadama accepting bribe money from Lockheed, he had betrayed the samurai code, leading investigators to believe that this was Maino's reasoning for trying to dive a plane into Kadama's house. So let's talk about Kadama briefly, as well as his connection to the Lockheed scandal. Yoshio Kadama, post-war Japan's puppet master. Kadama exerted an enormous influence over the decisions of politicians, businessmen, yakuza, ultra-nationalists, and spies. He also happened to be pretty much all of those things himself. The man had so much power that he engineered the elections of two former Japanese prime ministers, Nobusuke Kishi and Ichiro Hatoyama. Smack in the middle of the Lockheed scandal was Yoshio Kadama. Kadama was hired by Lockheed as a consultant. His job was to influence Japanese airlines into buying the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar plane. Investigations later revealed that Lockheed had paid Kadama 1.7 billion yen, which is roughly $7 million US. After the scandal broke out, Kadama suffered from a stroke, and as a result, he was bedridden. But it's likely Kadama didn't get very much in the way of R&R. &R. Here's a scene from outside of his mansion after the Lockheed scandal came to light. <laughs> Tokyo! 
So uh, what you're seeing here is anti-Kadama protesters and they're demanding that he testify and be tried. Eventually, Kadama was indicted, but illness kept him out of the courtroom. Kadama's been sick in bed inside the house ever since the U.S. Senate subcommittee exposed him as Lockheed's backstairs fixer here in Japan. He and 11 others in the house were unhurt. The location's been a target for occasional demonstrators as well as something of a tourist attraction here in Tokyo, guarded by police as well as by Kodama's right-wing friends, not always polite to newsmen and bystanders. Maino saw bribe-taking as a violation of the samurai code Bushido that Mishima and other patriots espoused. The thing is that Lockheed was a major arms supplier for Japan's wartime enemies. One authority on Japan, political scientist Chalmers Johnson of the University of California, summed up the scandal this way. The case was serious since it deeply implicated officials of the transportation ministry, plus one of Japan's leading trading companies, and the prime minister himself. Worst of all, it brought up the name Yoshio Kodama. So now that we talked about Kodama, let's talk about the man who inspired Maino's kamikaze attack, Yukio Mishima. But first, another word from our sponsors. Tokyo drink. Takara kan that Maino was inspired by this man, Yukio Mishima. Let me tell you about this guy, because without him, Maino probably wouldn't have tried to kamikaze Kadama's mansion. Yukio Mishima was a novelist, a playwright, an actor, a director, and a poet. He was one of the most noteworthy Japanese novelists of the 20th century, and was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature three different times. Mishima's work remains highly regarded in Japan and the rest of the world to this day. But Mishima also happened to be a hardcore nationalist. He believed that Western values were rotting Japan like a cancer and weakening it into an island of pacifists. In order to rectify this, Mishima called for a restoration of Japan's divine emperor, who had been downgraded by the allied advisors to the status of a figurehead without any political control. And Mishima also called for a re-establishment and strengthening of the Japanese military, which had been cut down to only its defense forces. He called for all of these things, but no one listened. So Mishima decided to take matters into his own hands. This started with him forming his own personal militia and training them in the countryside for an event that he was planning. The event now known as the Mishima Incident took place during November of 1970. It started with him and four members of his militia storming into the Japanese Self-Defense Forces headquarters. Then they took a senior commander hostage and demanded that the JSDF soldiers gather in the courtyard below. Once the soldiers formed a crowd, Mishima stepped onto the courtyard's balcony and gave a speech. His speech was meant to incite the soldiers to revolt, to initiate a coup, to rise up against Western influences and to help restore the emperor to the position of divine ruler. In response, the men of the JSDF booed Mishima and mocked him for his ridiculous ideas. After the soldiers booed him, Mishima committed seppuku. Mishima's seppuku was followed by a kaishaku, which is meant to end the suffering of seppuku with a quick and easy beheading. Only thing is, there wasn't anything quick and easy about Mishima's beheading at all. A member of Mishima's militia named Morita was meant to chop off Mishima's head, but Morita kept messing up. Mishima squirmed as Morita tried and failed to muster up enough strength to behead his leader. After several attempts, another one of Mishima's disciples took over and finally managed to get a clean cut. According to his father, the Mishima incident as well as the novelist's teachings, acted as an inspiration for Maino. So now that we have a better understanding of those who were involved and what inspired Maino, it's time to go over a detailed account of the events that took place on that fateful day. Tokyo Drink. Takara Kanchuhai. Shinkankaku. 
This excerpt is from the book Yakuza, Japan's Criminal Underworld. It reads, On the chilly Tuesday morning of March 23rd, 1976, Mitsuyasu Maino arrived with three friends at Chofu Airport on the western outskirts of Tokyo. All were dressed in the style of kamikaze pilots. Maino, a qualified pilot, told flying club officials that he wanted to rent two aircrafts to film a sequence on kamikaze flyers. When he and his friends clad in kamikaze outfits approached airport officials with their camera crew, they were convincing enough to obtain the rental of two planes. Maino knew the route well. The week before, he had made three flights around Kadama's neighborhood. Before climbing into the cockpit of his Piper Cherokee, he strapped on a headband designed with Japan's rising sun, as kamikaze pilots did before their suicide flights during the war. Shouting the kamikaze war cry, Tenno Banzai, long live the emperor, Maino flew off, followed by his friends, and they proceeded to circle Tokyo in formation for about an hour. Maino then changed course, telling his cohorts that he had business in Setagaya, a Tokyo suburb and home of Yoshio Kadama. Maino Maino approached Kadama's house at a low altitude and circled twice, shouting the war cry over his radio. Aiming his aircraft nose first, he dove into Kadama's house, smashing into a veranda and dying instantly, but missing his intended victim, who lay in bed in another part of the house. The attack set the building ablaze, yet Kadama survived. So did 11 other people. Only Mitsuyasu died that day. When asked about it years later, Kadama is reported to have admired how brazen the attack was. The reaction to Maino's attack was divisive. Some sympathized with Maino's actions because of their anger at Kadama's association with the Lockheed scandal. Lockheed by then had become Japan's Watergate, and at the time it was the biggest scandal in the nation's post-war history. The scandal brought up what the Japanese thought they had put behind them, a corrupt government intertwined with organized crime. However, many others rejected Maino's ideological motivations. Kichi Ito, a surviving member of the kamikaze units, said that Maino's attack was self-serving, egotistical, and grandstanding. Ito compared Maino's attack to Mishima's suicide, saying that they were both showing off to the world. And there you have it, friends. The story of Mitsuyasu Maino, the porn star, ultra-nationalist, and kamikaze pilot. The 29-year-old who crashed his plane into the mansion of Yoshio Kadama after being inspired by Yukio Mishima's seppuku. So stay tuned for more weird and unbelievable stories just like this, because I got a lot more on the way. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.